With me today, I have some of the most underrated backpacking gear on the planet. Now, this is stuff that I rely upon on almost every backpacking trip, but they're often these overlooked items that I see most people not even using. So, what are they? Let's get down to the most underrated backpacking gear on the planet. Max, show them what we got. Okay, the first thing that I always backpack with that is super underrated, and I don't think most people even backpack with them, is a dromedary or a water bag. The dromedary, I believe, might be MSR's proprietary name for their water bag. I don't actually know. I just have always called them a dromedary. However, this one is from Sea to Summit. It's called the Water Cell X. And uh, what I would totally recommend is just having a simple way to haul water. I really like these rugged designs. You can throw them on the ground, you can treat them like crap, and they are super rugged and burly. But they're more than just water haulers. What I really like is that they have cool caps that you can seal and lock, and then this is one of the ways in which you can administer water there. So it's a really easy for, say, pouring into uh, a cup or you know something where you're just measuring out a certain amount of water. Sometimes if you're pouring it out of a camelback or a Nalgene, it can just, you know, water goes everywhere. It's nice to be able to streamline it. This particular one has the super cool extra piece down here that I can unhook. I can add this. Now I've got a shower, <laughs> which is awesome for any sort of hygiene that people might want to do. Obviously, it might be cold, but it is a great way to, uh, you know, stay clean out there as well. So these pieces of gear have many functions and I really like them. Mostly, I like them for when I'm at camp and I need to go away from camp in order to collect my water. One of the reasons why I really like this is that when I'm at camp, I can just go and scoop up some dirty water. I can throw an aqua tab or something like that if I want to treat it that way, if I've got a clean water source. Or I can obviously connect this onto most water filters and just pump clean water directly into there. It is a great way to haul water. But one of the reasons why I like this over a, a hard container or a water bottle is that it obviously is going to collapse and uh, when it's not full, it's not going to take up any room or very little room at least. And I really like this design that they have because it does a really nice job of fitting nice and flat in your backpack. Now, for years I used MSR's version and I love them. Um, I just have come across Sea to Summit's version recently and I think that it's an upgrade because you can stand it up. It's just a lot easier to handle on its own. It comes with these nice ways to pour it. So I really like this version. And I think that it's an awesome thing for most people out there to get used to using something like this to haul water. I do most of my backpacking in the desert, so having the ability to haul two, three, four extra liters of water is sometimes super critical. So I always use one of these. I don't see most of the people doing it, and I think that they're really critical and awesome for backpacking. Next up on my list of underrated backpacking equipment is a compression sack. So in here, I have a sleeping bag suitable for uh, 15 degree sleeping. So uh, typically that will take up a fair bit amount of room in somebody's backpack. But with the compression straps, I can really cinch this down. So not only is weight super important, but space inside of a backpack, as you can think about, there's only so much room in a backpack. So being able to shrink your sleeping bag down to half it's normal size that it comes in with the stuff sack that you get from the store that you bought it from is really, really awesome. An additional bonus is that these often have a good bit of water repellency and sometimes even waterproofness. So depending on the kind of bag you get, if this were to get dunked, my sleeping bag inside would remain pretty dry. It would take a pretty good submersion and staying that way for that water to really get in and wet out my seating bag. So that is another really nice bonus there. Next on my list, you've heard me talk about it before and I'm gonna talk about it again, but trekking poles, my friends. Now, a lot of people think that trekking poles are kind of lame. I was definitely in that category and I had a hesitancy to get some trekking poles. 
As soon as I did though, I see why they are beloved and pretty much a critical piece of gear for anybody who does a lot of hiking. Through hikers are always having trekking poles. They will never leave home without it. And uh, I've, you know, started to become quite the proponent of them myself. Now the science on this may be up for debate, but I've heard it said that trekking poles will reduce the impact on your body by around 10 or 15%, which means if you are doing 10 or 15 miles of trail, it's going to feel like you did, you know, eight or, you know, 12 miles or so, depending on how many miles you're actually doing. The impact on your body will be greatly reduced, especially if you're doing something like the Grand Canyon or something with a lot of verticality. It's not just the helpfulness on the going up, it's hugely helpful on the way down. You're more stable, you're more safe, you're less likely to turn an ankle, and you just reduce the overall wear and tear on your body. And they're a great safety piece as well. If you're needing to cross a creek, you're gonna be more likely to stay upright and not go for a dunk or go for a swim. If you've got some trekking poles to help you out with that stability. Uh, if you're going in places with uh, quicksand, you can check out quicksand as well. So there are a ton of reasons why I recommend trekking poles. Now I've had people ask me before, what do I even look for in trekking poles? And there's a couple of things. So one, how they lock. These particular pair from Lecky uh, have this uh, latch lock, which I personally really like. I don't like the twist ones. I think that those tend to fail over time faster than these. So I like this ability. And then the other thing is I really like the ability to break these down into three because I don't always want to be using them. So the ability to stash these on the side of my pack and not have them take up a big piece of my backpack side is really nice. So I like the ones that break down in three. Last, I think, is weight, um, importance on weight. So, uh, you know, you can save a couple grams. These are carbon uh, or carbon fiber, I think, and they're really pricey. These are like 250 bucks, but I think that people can get away with a great set of poles for 80 to $120, and you will really appreciate having them. Next on my list is some hidden things. So not only is it this item, but it's what's in there. So you gotta stick around if you wanna find out what that is. Before I reveal the next few items, I do wanna give a shout out to Lead Lenser. They are the sponsor of this video. They're helping to make it possible. Lead Lenser makes amazing headlamps, and I've been using their headlamps for a long time, and I really like them. They're super great for backpacking, and if you wanna check out more, check out leadlenserusa.com for more. All right. Back to the good stuff. This is uh, Pack Organization. This one comes, this is the Pack Stack Pro. I actually don't recall the name of the company that makes it, I'm sorry, um, but it's the Pack Stack Pro. That's the actual product name. This one is waterproof. And so I really like that this one has the waterproof zipper because I have now started using it as my camera bag. I used to backpack with a full actual camera bag inside my backpack to give it the protection it needed. But what it did was it took up a huge amount of my pack and it didn't offer any sort of water protection. So now this thing is collapsible. What I often do is just throw a jacket in with it and it keeps my camera gear safe, which I really like. But just in general, if you're not a camera person, it's really great to have packed storage. One of the things that I really like about this particular kind, if you can see, it's got kind of a horseshoe shape which just really nicely fits inside my backpack. So I can nest it right inside. This goes against the back of my backpack. This goes against the front. And it just really nicely fills the backpack out without wasting any space. So it's great for clothing or whatever you might wanna do. Food storage, you could stack modular, a handful of these in your backpack, and it's going to help keep everything nice and tidy. This is something that I'm kind of new to. A lot of people have pointed out that I have a habit a long-standing habit of throwing all of my gear just into my backpack. And that's true, I've done that for a long, long time. I've recently started using this pack organization and I just really, really like it. So they're simple items, I think they're like 35 bucks uh, for a bag. I think the non-waterproof ones are even cheaper. It's a pretty inexpensive way to be maximize your efficiency in a backpack, so I really like that. Also within it, I have a few more items that are underrated. I've talked about this before. Other people talk about it before. This is a pillow. I love backpacking with a pillow. It makes a huge difference in my sleep quality. 
It weighs very, very little, and it's very easy to inflate. This particular one has some down insulation, so it's nice and cozy on my head. I really like it, and it just makes a huge difference in my sleep. These cost anywhere from like 20 to 50 bucks, uh, depending on the kind you get and how nice they are, basically, or how much insulation they have. So I highly recommend you get a pillow to increase your sleep quality. Makes a huge difference. Now, this item, I know that Lead Lenser is the sponsor, and I'm not saying this because Lead Lenser is the sponsor. Um, this is just a good rule across the board, no matter what brand it is, but having a good headlamp. I can't tell you how many people I see out there backpacking with lights that barely illuminate anything. And uh, if you ever get in a situation where you need to navigate at night, that little dinky headlamp is just gonna be a big challenge and it could be a safety issue. Personally, I like having a nice bright headlamp that has the ability to focus light into a beam for looking say across a canyon or to see something that's kind of far away or the ability to broaden that beam out and uh, make it so that it's just kind of my general camp illumination. Now, I often do not use it at its brightest mode because that will sap batteries out very quickly. So if I'm just cooking or hanging out in my tent or reading, don't keep it on the full bright. In fact, I generally recommend people use the red light because it will keep your eyes from getting uh, too overexposed or what's the right word? Uh, keep your eyes from getting accustomed to the light. Why can't I think straight? I don't know. If you have the red light on, it is like you, you maintain your night vision. That's what I'm trying to get at. You can see stars, you can see other people. You're not shining your light into people's faces. So use that red light. It's really nice. So LED Lenser makes great headlamps. I really like this one. This is the MH5, but it doesn't have to be LED Lenser. I'm just suggesting people get a quality headlamp that uh, has a good battery power and a nice beam ability for navigation in an emergency. Two more items on my list here, and the next one up is a windscreen, which I actually don't have in front of me, but I have some cool B-roll that we're about to roll right now. So windscreens are awesome for keeping, it, they're super simple, they're just a sheet of aluminum or really lightweight metal. They're flexible, they roll up, and they're really easy to just circle around your stove as it's cooking. So if you have a simple stove like a pocket rocket or anything that's not a jet boil or the type of stove that inherently has the heat transfer capabilities, what it does is it blocks the wind and it makes your stoves way, way more efficient. If you don't have a chimney style stove, then getting a windscreen is critical for maximizing your fuel consumption and boil times and just in general, making your food, your coffee, everything a lot faster. So invest in a very cheap little windscreen and you will thank me for it. Last on my list, what is the last thing that is the most underrated piece of gear in backpacking? Well, my friends, it's very simple. It is a good pair of hiking socks. So uh, a lot of people that I see out there just hike in whatever socks that they've always worn, maybe gym socks or something like that. The problem is, is that anything that's cotton or something like that doesn't moisture doesn't wick moisture away from your feet. Now, there are synthetics. I just prefer good old fashioned wool, uh, but the idea is to get a good pair of hiking socks. Now they can be pricey, anywhere from 15 to $25 typically, which might sound very expensive for a pair of socks, and they kind of are, but a good pair of socks will be your best friend on the trail. The main thing is it's gonna keep your feet happy blister-free, hopefully, at least, or at least much more likely to be blister-free uh, than if you hike in something like a cotton pair of socks. So just don't even bring those cotton socks on the trail. They are garbage, they are a waste, and get a good pair. What I typically recommend is to have a pair that you hike in and then a follow-up pair that you sleep in. So if you do that and you can rotate those pair of socks, two pairs of socks can go a long ways on the trail and you will be sleeping comfortably, you will be hiking comfortably, and you're, if your feet are happy, then there's a good chance that you're happy. Okay, my friends, 
That's my list of underrated backpacking gear. If you have something that you think that I missed, a piece of non-obvious gear, not sleeping bags, not tents, you know, stuff like that. What is it that I missed? Or hit me up with your favorite here from the list below, and I'd love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this video, please give it that thumbs up. It really helps us out. Make sure that you're subscribed here at Backpacking TV. We love the community that's building here. It's exciting to be a part of, and I'm thankful to every one of you who are watching this video. All right, I'm Eric Hansen. I gotta get out of here because we got a rainstorm coming in. Peace.